black and white dresses, Rochelle lace, rectangle headdresses, striped socks, mini hats, tying a ribbon under your chin, carrying a plushie around with you. What the hell do all of these things have in common? On one hand, your mind might go off to old school. All of these items were pretty common in old school when you look at JLB and Kara Street snaps. On the other hand, maybe your mind wanders off away from the dreamland of old school to something a bit more nightmarish, filled with itchy lace monsters and Milano scams and anime conventions and Neko Mimi Meido Kawaii Desu Lolita Nya, and you found yourself in the world of Ida Staples. So if all of these things I've listed, black and white dresses, Russia lace, rectangle headdresses, striped socks, etc., etc., were once a part of old school and still are a big part of Lolita today, why were they once considered Ida Staples? Well, that's what I'd like to look at today. So let's go over the history of some of these items, a bit of the history of Lolita, and of our dear and darling Idas who still live among us today. To be clear, when I'm talking about things like black and white dresses and rectangle headdresses and all of that being considered Ida staples, it was mostly that they were associated with replicas of Lolita fashion that were not actually Lolita and were considered easy to be picked up by Idas or beginner Lolitas. Of course, if you're familiar with Lolita fashion, you probably know that an Ida refers to someone whose Lolita outfit is so hard to look at that it hurts or so bad it hurts because ida comes from the japanese word itai which means ouch now this video is not a commentary on whether ida should exist as a word or not i'm just examining why certain items were once considered ida staples and why that's changed over time and i'd like to be clear that i don't think there was ever a point where every single lolita would assert that you couldn't wear black and white dresses because it was inherently ida no matter what just that there were a lot of older guides, which I'll list in the description box below, like Lolita Tips or F Yeah Lolita on Tumblr, that would refer to black and white dresses, rectangle headdresses, Rochelle lace, striped socks, animal ears, mini hats, all of this old school stuff as Ida staples and would usually associate them with an Ida phase. For example, I'm quoting F Yeah Lolita here in a post from 2011, which says, the black and white color scheme is one of Lolita's most infamous color combos. To some, black and white is the quintessential Lolita. To others, it is an instant faux pas, and to many, it is a very nostalgic color combo. I've seen a lot of people instantly write off black and white dresses, even of very good quality, simply because of the color combo, which is incredibly unfair. So we can see that even in 2011, at the point where black and white dresses were associated with Ida and were considered an Ida staple, there was plenty of people who disagreed and were advocating for a love of black and white dresses. And I'm sure this applied to everything else from mini hats to Rochelle lace, etc. And the reason I'm lumping all of these things together is because they have a lot in common in how they ended up being considered Ida staples. So let's get into reason number one, accessibility. Now in the early 2010s, the late 2000s, and perhaps even earlier than that, it was really hard to access Lolita fashion. Even if you're a new Lolita and you've joined in the last couple of years, you've probably heard this at some point. Lolita is super accessible now. You can order directly from Japan and China and Korea and other countries in Europe or America, Canada, wherever you want using shopping services or lace market or Facebook. So it's pretty easy to get a hold of Lolita, but not only is it easy to buy, it's easy to find information. You can go on Facebook and use the search function in Lolita groups to find an entire history and wealth of information for you. The old blogs and the old guidebooks are still up and you can even rifle through old GLBs or books like So Pretty, Very Rotten to find out more about Lolita. So there is really just a ton of information out there. Now, of course, I joined the fashion in 2017, but I learned about it in maybe like 2012, 2013, which was a time when the most information you would find is on Tumblr. And I didn't think I would ever wear Lolita fashion simply because of how hard it was to actually get the dresses. You were more likely to end up on a site like Milanu, 
or a cosplay website which carried imitations of Lolita fashion. And this is where a lot of these old school items as uh, Ida Staples comes in. There were these horrible lace monsters or literal replicas of dresses or just cheap knockoffs and costumes that were passed as Lolita fashion. And most of them were in black and white because this was a staple of the previous decade of Lolita, which was now what we call old school. They used really cheap Rochelle lace, which was often itchy and always very low quality because it was what was easiest to come by and good quality Rochelle lace was common in Lolita at some point. So if the most accessible thing was these low quality black and white dresses or often a two-tone color scheme like red and white or white and black or pink and white, then obviously this kind of color combo is going to be associated with people who don't do the proper research or who simply don't know how to access the proper research and end up looking Ida. And outside of black and white dresses, this applies to pretty much everything. If you're looking for something like striped socks or mini hats, which are already rarer than something like head bows or solid OTKs in Lolita fashion, it's going to be even harder to find the more niche items. And so you're going to end up with cheaper non Lolita alternatives and it's not going to look good. So it was easier for people to say avoid mini hats because they're cheap and don't look Lolita as a universal statement to make sure that people strayed away from bad quality items. Now on these guys that recommend say staying away from mini hats or striped socks or animal ears, you'll usually find a disclaimer that indicates that you can wear brand items that are these things. And so for example, you'll have pictures of Angelic Pretty's mini hats or you'll have striped socks for Meta or something. And this is how Lolita was at the time. You wanted to avoid anything that wasn't brand because everything else was pretty bad. There wasn't the same wealth of Taobao brands and Western indie brands and international indie brands in general. Really what this meant is that anything stereotypically Lolita was picked up by the most accessible websites, which were usually costume shops, cosplay shops, or just straight up scams. Reason number two, anime and anime conventions. Now here's the thing. I don't think people find Lolita through anime anymore or not as much as they used to. But when I was young, Lolita was very strongly connected to anime and anime conventions. There were a lot of characters in a lot of different shows that were tied to Lolita fashion or were interpreted as Lolita. When I was young in the 2010s, the most popular of this was probably Misa Amane from Death Note, but I can also think of Stalking from Panty and Stalking or Rose and Maiden in general or Cardcaptor Sakura, Madoka Magica or... Anyway, you get the point there was a lot of Lolita elements or what people interpreted as Lolita elements present in anime. And this meant that a lot of Lolita items or Lolita fashion would end up being sold at anime conventions because people ended up tying Lolita with cosplay. And a lot of these anime Lolita designs feature what we consider Ida staples. So striped stockings, especially mini hats, rectangle headdresses. I swear every single anime Lolita has like a rectangle headdress or a mini hat or at the very worst animal ears. She probably was wearing a black and white or maybe a black and red or black and purple dress if she was gothic and a pink and white dress if she was sweet. The sweets were almost blonde. You know, you get the point. These were very st stereotypical interpretations of Lolita. And so all of these elements were associated with anime and therefore were associated with bad because obviously if you're offering something as a cosplay version of a fashion that has nothing to do with costumes, it's going to end up looking like a costume knockoff of the real thing. I think this is especially true for like animal ears and why rectangle headdresses were kind of looked down on for some time. Pretty much every resource that I can find that refers to rectangle headdresses as Ida staples or hard to coordinate or something references anime. And I think anime really influenced strongly what Lolita's wanted to avoid because the last thing that people wanted was to even more so than normal be assumed that they're wearing a costume. and being associated with anime and things like that. 
Now, obviously there's plenty of Lolitas who are into anime and there's plenty of Lolitas who discovered it through anime like me and, you know, don't wear costumes, don't wear replicas, don't wear cheap um, knockoff bad quality items, no matter what, no matter how you find it, you need to do research. And there were a lot of people who viewed Lolita as more of a costume and a cosplay and didn't put the research in. You know, you wanted to look like the anime interpretation of Lolita instead of a real Lolita. And that's obviously not going to go over well with the community. And so these items that people would gravitate to would again, end up being considered as Ida staples. Number three, harder to coordinate. Now, I think this is a bit of a vicious cycle where something is a bit more difficult to coordinate and so gets picked up and badly coordinated by a lot of beginners and so becomes considered an Eda staple and then is considered hard to coordinate because of that because it's hard to make it look good because so many people wear it badly, et cetera, et cetera. But my point is that a lot of these items were not beginner friendly and I'll go through the list a bit to explain why. So black and white dresses, there's very stark contrast and the lace is very, very visible, so it needs to be very good quality or else it inherently looks sloppy. Therefore, you need to make sure you're getting a good quality dress that has good quality accessories or else all people are going to see with this dark contrast is the bad quality parts of it. Mini hats are often considered hard to coordinate to this day because of the sheer volume. You need to have a hairstyle that balances out well. I see people wearing it a lot to the side with twin tails or like a big bun, Priscilla wigs, that kind of thing. I think it looks very cute, but you know, classic mini hats and Gothic mini hats often have less volume and can be worn with flat hair. And with animal ears, for example, I think the issue is pretty similar to mini hats and black and white dresses. There's just a lot of bad quality versions of it and the volume can make them hard to coordinate. And there is the added issue of them being completely out of place thematically a lot of the time. So those are just some examples of how a lot of these Eda staples are really just items that are more difficult to coordinate even when you have a good quality version. My biggest tip if you're interested in some of these items but are worried about them being hard to coordinate is one is really just that if you buy a piece that is fully intended to be Lolita, it is usually fine to wear. Now, of course, there are still some exceptions. For example, um, I found some pretty ugly ass mini hats like on Taobao. And that's not to say that like Taobao brands are lesser or bad. It's just that there's a lot more people, I think, cashing in on the trend of Lolita, where a lot of older Taobao brands, let's say like Infanta or Yolanda or Dear Celine or plenty of others that are more established have been in the game for longer. So you should look for items from an established Lolita brand that are from a reputable seller and have a reasonable price so you, that you're sure that the item you're going to get is of good quality. Just be smart about it, you know. Don't buy from costume shops. Don't buy from shops that seem to be not used by the community, that kind of thing. But just because something is harder to coordinate doesn't mean you can't make it work. It just means that it might take you some time to develop your own style first and see how you really want to coordinate it. Just look at a ton of examples. Take your time and you'll be fine eventually. Four, trends. Now, the last thing I wanted to talk about with this is just the fact that trends and styles change. Lolita is generally more sustainable trend-wise because it takes longer for trends to change. After all, you see people referring to eras in Lolita and they usually last a few years instead of a few months or even weeks or days with the micro trends that we're seeing currently in popular normie fashion. I think this is a good thing. I don't think trends should change every week here. That's terrible for the environment and terrible for people's wallets and self-esteem. But even though we are generally more patient with trends, I think it's important to remember that trends are just that. When something becomes outdated or trends change, that doesn't mean the outdated thing is inherently bad or can't be worn anymore. Style is subjective at the end of the day, and the same thing can be said to styles within Lolita. Personally, I don't really like OTT Rococo classic that has been popularized by a lot of Chinese brands, and I also don't really like ping walls in Lolita. Those are two things that are either trendy now or were in the past, but that doesn't mean that those items are inherently bad because they're not 
as popular anymore or because they won't be popular one day. And in the same vein, old school was super unpopular for a time. I know it can be hard to fathom for newer Lolitas because of the sheer popularity and boom in old school, but that's part of why all of these items were considered Ida staples. They were outdated. They were a thing of the past. You know, Lolita was better now and there was the focus on prints and OTT suite and all of this stuff that was essentially the opposite of the toned down, relaxed image that old school showed. But of course, we know that's not true now. You can have exaggerated silhouettes and a ton of detail in old school if you like OTT. You can have relaxed casual suite instead of OTT suite. Anything is really possible within the sub-style that you like. And at one point, OTT suite was considered outdated. It's super popular now. All the things that are popular now are eventually going to be considered outdated. They already kind of are. People are super over chiffon dresses when they were really popular at one point and everyone wants to go back to cotton. So all of that is to say that just because something isn't popular or maybe looks tacky to us because it's outdated, that doesn't mean it actually is. And I think we should really learn to respect the Lolita trends of the past and encourage people to revisit them and, you know, allow people to stay within their own styles, even if trends in the community change. Not it only is it more sustainable for our wardrobes, our own wallet, and for the environment in general, but it allows for more creativity and more exploration of personal style within the fashion, instead of expecting everyone to just move on to the next big thing. In conclusion, I really just wanted to give my opinion on the whole idea of an Edith staple. Now, now, of course, there's always going to be the stereotypical Ida for every generation of Lolita. At the moment, I think of a TikToker who's wearing an AliExpress dress with, you know, uh, cheap cat ears and sparkly demonia boots. But of course, buying clothes or Lolita accessories off of AliExpress is not inherently Ida. There are a few reputable sellers. Again, cat ears are not inherently Ida. We've seen brands put out a ton and we've seen a ton of successful cords with them. However, those glittery demonia boots are inherently Ida and I will not budge on that because they have nothing to do with Lolita fashion. Very sorry to all the Lolitas who love them, but that's just my onion on it. When an item is constantly being put out by Lolita brands, and I don't even mean just Japanese ones, but brands that are accepted by the community, whether they're Western or Chinese or Korean or Japanese, at a certain point, we need to give up on labeling these items as Ida or inherently Ida just because there are cheaper, low quality versions. We need to direct people to the correct resources, but telling them to avoid something that they love is never going to work. We need to provide an alternative instead of saying this is never going to work for you. I don't think discouraging people has ever been successful. And so encouraging them towards the proper resources and saying, hey, you can wear your cat ears, but do it like this with this good quality piece will probably save a few Nekomini souls. Though at the end of the day, there's always gonna be stubborn teenagers that you can't do anything about. And that's all for this video. I hope you enjoyed this kind of exploration of a small, perhaps controversial part of Lolita history. And of course, I'd love to know down below what you think of this subject. Are there old Ida staples that you love or hate? Are there Ida staples of nowadays that you absolutely detest or still love? And what even are Ida staples of today? There's just so much to talk about with this kind of subject and I can't wait to talk to you guys about it in the comments below. I will see you in my next video. I hope you have a wonderful day, but until then, for now, I will have to say bye-bye. <laughs>